Welcome to the scaffold board build tutorial. This pattern originates from a wooden floor mosaic and was introduced as an ingrain cutting board by Stephen Cope. I have created this drawing of the triangle segments you will need to build to complete the pattern. There are four individual components in the pattern and a total of 10 parts to complete the pattern. Here's a build out of the pattern. Every other block is inverted and flipped over so that opposing faces are book match. The process starts by rough cutting my stock to 24 inches long. Next I start ripping my boards down to a width that my jointer can handle. I've rough cut about 16 board feet of stock here. For my project I've selected walnut, cherry, and maple. With the stock you see here I'll be creating two identical boards. The milling process starts by flattening one face of the jointer. Next I'll run them through the planer for proper dimensioning. Here I'm ripping some stock, getting ready to glue two pieces together to create the center triangle, component letter A. It's best to use 8 quarter stock if you have it. My stock is 3 quarters, so I'll be laminating two pieces together to form the triangle. And my first glue up is going to be two stack pieces to form the center core triangle. Uh, if you have some six quarter or eight quarter stock, that's probably the best. All my stock is three quarters, so I'm going to glue two pieces to be able to create my triangles. Uh, I always try to color match the stock so everything's cut from the same board. And the two strips here are actually cut uh, side by side when I make these, so I get the best chance of a color match. Now I'm going to glue these up on edge and I want this spaced in the center so I made some spacers here out of MDF. These are sacrificial. I'm going to try to pull them out after I clamp this up but if I can't they're just going to be cut away when I create the triangles. I'm not going to bother anything. maple stock for component B which needs to get milled down to 0.59 inches rather than just plant it all away um, I'll resaw some off to save some work for my planer next I'm going to resaw my walnut stock for components C and D I've determined I can get both components out of one 3 quarter inch thick board yeah, I just finished resawing my uh, walnut and maple here. The walnut pieces are going to form the uh, the blocks that appear to be connecting the beams, and I, I've resawed these to account for the thicknesses I'm going to need for my work pieces. So I've got this thin piece here that has a uh, 30 degree bevel on each side. So my my thinner resaw piece is actually going to be for this create this piece. So I'm going to run these through my planer, mill them to the thickness I need. Uh, my test piece here is going to be my, my guide. So I'm just separating these and my thicker piece right here I'm actually going to create these uh, small triangles with. But we'll get to that in a bit. I've got a, a jig I use for that. So I don't need to plane these since I'm just going to be ripping triangles and the top portion is going to come off. Um, looks like I've got just enough room of about a, an eighth inch proud of uh, the final dimension of this. So I'm going to have to rip these 
kind of carefully. Um, should work out fine. So I'm going to get ready to run these through the planer and mill them. And then I've got my maple pieces here. I've just resawed a bit off to save my planer some work. These are just scrap. And I'm going to be creating these pieces here that uh, in the pattern create the beams. And uh, I've, re I've resawed these over thickness so I don't shoot myself in the foot. I can plane these down to my final dimensions uh, that I have written down and, and uh, based on my test piece here. So before I mill up my good stock, I've created some, uh, these test pieces, which I already know are uh, all of it fits well. And I'll get to that here in a little bit. And my the clamping jig is where we test the fit here. One of the key things of putting this project together is this clamping jig. I, I've got an MDF form here. I built up one, two, three, four layers of MDF on top of a piece of plywood. Uh, these are cut at a 60 degree angle and I've, I've stacked them. Uh, I just used some brads and glues and carefully stacked these so the, the angle is uh, flush. I use a block of wood to, to bring it flush. and. Uh, glue them down. Then I line my form here with some cork and some packing tape to keep the glue from sticking. Uh, the form wasn't quite tall enough so I added one more layer of quarter inch plywood so that when my uh, triangle is in here to be glued up uh, the form supports it all the way to the top. Uh, the, the triangle does need to be just a little bit proud of the top or you can uh, cut this piece so it, it comes down in here a little bit to get clamping pressure on that um, triangle when you glue it up. So one of the keys for success for me is to cut test pieces. These dimensions have to be so accurate. Uh, so I've, I've checked these with my dial calipers, make sure my dimensions are accurate. I just, I just cut little short pieces of my, uh, my test strips here that I cut with some inexpensive alder. Uh, so I just put these together and check the fit before I rip my good stock. Uh, looking at the pattern here to see how things are glued up. This piece is going to go in first. Then we've got this block. This sits on top of that. Then one of our small triangles nests right in there. And as you put this together here, this triangle should be uh, pretty well flush with the top of this block. Now, it can be a little deceiving because we're not under clamping pressure yet. So, I kind of put some pressure with my fingers, check things. And now we've got this block here is going to sit on top of those. And now our large triangle goes in. Just colored these with some pins so we can try to see uh, for identification of our parts here. Let's see, I have to ask myself if I'm doing this right sometimes. Now this triangle goes in here. Then another large piece here. Another small triangle. This is going to be a fun glue up because we've got 9, 12, 13 pieces. So this is how it goes together. We're going to glue it all up, get our clamping jig on top of here, and put some clamping pressure. Okay, I've got all my work pieces milled the proper thickness. Um, 
But before I cut my triangles over here, I'm actually going to cut these in half. So I, I cut them to 24 inches for the purpose of milling them. Uh, and the glue ups here for my center triangles. But the triangle ripping jig I have for the table saw, you have better control if you work with shorter pieces. Okay, here I'm ripping my walnut stock for component D, which is the smallest triangle to about half inch wide. Uh, I want all these pieces to be the same dimension because the way the triangle ripping jig works, uh, for things to be accurate, they all need to be the same dimension. Now I'm ready to start ripping my first triangles and I'm going to tilt the blade to 60 degrees. Okay, I'm getting ready to rip my first triangles and I want to talk a little bit about this jig I made. I made this at a previous project so we're not really going to go over uh, the actual building of the jig. It's basically a piece of plywood. Uh, I think I've got four inches wide here. And I put another, top, another piece here that allows me a grip, a place I can grip it. Uh, basically it rides along the fence. Then I have a backer here that's going to support the workpiece. Um, another thing I need to do is I need to keep the workpiece against the uh, fence. So I just use my push stick here to hold it against there. Um, I found that a feather board doesn't really work because once I rip the triangle on one side I'm going to turn around and my finished triangle is actually going to be my waist piece. It's going to be over here. So accuracy can be a little bit of a challenge. What I do is I make some test cuts, have some scrap, I make a triangle, and when it measures, uh, when it's right where I need it to be, I'm going to use this as a setup block, place it against my blade, and use my fingers to calibrate where to set this fence, where to set my fence for this to ride to create my finished triangle here. So for starters, I've set my blade height so it will cut through the block here. I've drawn a layout line for my first cut, where I need my first cut to be. And I can adjust my fence. Get me close there. And I'm ready to cut the first, uh, first side of the triangle. push the whole jig all the way through the blade. I just shut it down. I don't want to cut uh, all the way through the back of my jig. Um, I've got a backer block here that I replaced because as you uh, make more adjustments and more cuts, this is going to get eaten away and you're going to lose support for your workpiece. So I've just ripped the first side of my triangle here and for the next cut, what I'm going to do for the next cut is I'm going to take my, my setup jig and I'm going to move my fence. Actually, we need it to be the other way around. The triangle is created on the waist side of the blade. So now I'm going to adjust my fence and I'm going to use my fingers as a feeler gauge. Fingers are pretty good at detecting uh, change of thickness down to uh, a thousandths of an inch or so. It's a little too much now. Right about there feels pretty good. So that cut there should give me my finished work piece. I've cut these to 11 inch length. I found that uh, longer just has my jig way off the table here and creates stability problems. So I like to work with a shorter work piece here.
looks pretty good. Now I'll take my finished triangle. Uh, normally I would cut all these before I change the fence again. But uh, I can take my finished triangle now and go back over to my clamping jig and test it with my other test, test pieces to uh, make sure I'm on target. So I'm going to cut all these triangles and then I'll work on my smaller triangles and a little flat piece with the bevels that, uh, that form, the, uh, form the jig and, or uh, form the pattern. Okay, something else to point out about the jig here is when you make your work pieces, if you make them all the, the exact same width, uh, you can just set this thing up once. I have some that aren't the same width, uh, wasn't thinking ahead there. So you want to make sure that, uh, that your setup is going to be accurate for each cut. And I'm actually, I, I ripped my first couple or my first triangle and I'm actually going to have to move the fence for my second cut. And I'm just going to use my setup block here to set the fence. putting the 60 degree bevel on one side of component C. Uh, I'll put the bevel on one side and I'll set the fence to my final dimension and bevel the other side. Okay, now I'm getting ready to create this cut, and uh, I've got the angle basically going the same direction. And one of the problems that you might face is uh, this needs to ride against the fence right here. So if your fence has a big gap, you might need to put a uh, put a backer board right here or a sacrificial fence for this to ride against. Mine has a little bit of a gap, but it's pretty consistent all the way down the saw. So that edge is going to uh, tuck into that gap just a bit on my saw. Just want to make sure nothing's going to bind or or mess up your cut. So I got my setup block here. That's what I'm going to use to to, uh, to set up for my cut on my uh, test pieces that I have here. This is also a test piece. Um, so I like to create these test pieces so that when I cut my, my good stock, I already know it's, uh, the cut is accurate. So we'll get ready to cut these. Cut the first couple here. Alright, I've got all my pieces made. 
for my uh, final stock selection here and I'm getting ready for a dry fit. Everything should fit well. I've already tested with scrap and these are the same dimensions as my test piece scraps. So the way this build out works is first we take our flat piece with the two bevels. That goes in first. Then one of our large pieces here. Small triangle. Now as you test feed these, uh, this small triangle should be pretty well flush with this uh, bevel right here. Keep in mind this is going to be under clamping pressure, so I like to add a little bit of pressure and just kind of test things. Uh, the glue is going to be a little bit forgiving. Glue takes up a little bit of room, but uh, you need these things to be pretty, pretty accurate here. Okay, then we get the other large piece there. Now we're ready for center triangle. Center triangle should be pretty well flush with this here. I'm actually a tiny bit proud, but surprisingly this, this all seems to come together pretty well. <clears throat> another flat beveled piece there, another small triangle. So when we glue, go to glue all this up, we're going to have uh, 10 pieces to put glue on and fit together here. Now another large flat piece. Should be pretty well flush right here. I'm feeling just a tiny bit of difference, like a, maybe a couple thousandths. Uh, it's, just, <coughs> it's a real challenge to get all these just exact. That's pretty nice right there. That's nice and flush. And then that goes on last. This should be pretty well flush. And it is. Now we're going to put it under some clamping pressure. I've raised it up on these blocks. They're a little bit uh, thicker than my the jaws of my clamps. Now I'm going to glue up two of these at a time. This is 11 inches. I'll have another 11 inch one here. Total length of my form is 24 inches. First time I did this I glued them up in 22 inch long pieces but I found it easier to control the work pieces with my jig uh, if they're shorter. So that's just the way I like to do it. So this is my clamping strategy. Depending on the clamps you have, you may need to work out your own clamping strategy. And I'm going to be using a lot of clamps. I'm just putting a couple clamps on here for my dry fit. So I had a lot of struggles the very first time I built this. And uh, it, it is a process of test fitting pieces, a little bit of trial and error. One of, the, one of the tests I like to make is these small triangles, if I can push them through easily with my pencil, something's not right. And these are nice and firm. The large triangle, I can't push that. Everything seems nice and snug. So it looks like we're ready to glue these up.
came out pretty good. These are nice and flush. So the next thing I'm going to do with these is just one pass over the joiner. Uh, yeah, just a little bit of a lip right here. So we're going to give these one pass over the joiner on each side of the triangle. Try to keep, uh, keep things symmetrical. Whatever we do to one side, we're going to do to the other two. Alright, I'm getting ready to pass these blocks over the joiner. Uh, I've determined it's going to take two passes on each side. So I'm going to make a pass on each face. And then a second pass on each face. And uh, hope for the best as, as far as keeping these uh, symmetrical. But to me, they need to be cleaned up. Uh, you're not going to get a good glue up the way they are right now. So. For the most part, that looks pretty good. I see a couple little pencil marks here, uh, but I'm not going to push it any further. I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go with that. Two passes on each side. got our blocks ready to uh, cut into pucks and go for our first glue up. Uh, I've seen this done a couple ways. The way I'm going to do is I'm going to slice all these into pucks and then I'm going to glue them up, uh, pinch them between calls. So if you notice the pattern uh, staggers, basically this is a mirror image of this side. So every other one is flipped. And uh, one of the methods I've seen to glue these up is to Go for one big glue up like this. Now you're going to need some uh, some calls across the top. I would split this down the middle, so you've got a square in here, and then bring this end over here uh, to get clamping pressure this way and this way to keep it flat. And then this whole assembly will need to get run through your planer, slice into pucks this way to glue up your board. I don't like doing it this way. This isn't how I'm going to do it. We're going to go to the bandsaw. We're going to slice these into pucks a little over our board thickness and then uh, make our first glue ups. Okay, we got all of our segments cut here and I've got them laid out. Um, now to clamp these things. Uh, there's, there's a couple ways to do this. I've seen one way where they take them in sections of five like this and put a band around it or, or to take all the logs before you saw them in the pucks and put bands around it. I don't like this method. Um, I'm making a square board, so I, why would I want these uh, hexagons? So 
what I do is I take them in rows I'm going to glue these up in rows and I'm going to pinch them between calls but before I can do this I need to trim off these end blocks or I'm going to trim this block in half so I can fill this uh, angle over here so that's going to be the next thing I do is to trim uh, the blocks that need to be cut in half to square up this side and this side then to clamp these I'm going to sandwich them between calls with clamping pressure this way and then clamping pressure that way and once I have my rows glued up um, I'll carefully pass the row, each row over the joiner before gluing up the final board. Well, I determined that my clamping jig that I made for the other uh, diamond stack board that I did is going to work pretty good for this glue up as well. I'm going to glue up two rows at a time, place these calls in between them. So I'm actually ready to start spreading some glue right now. taken my glue ups out of the jig and uh, the next step is going to be to run them across the jointer so we can glue up the final board. Before I do that I want to scrape off some of this glue squeeze out. Uh, it's going to help things lay flatter on our next glue up and I also want to clean up uh, these surfaces a little bit so this lays uh, pretty fat, flat on the jointer and hopefully I can just clean this up in one pass so I don't uh, ruin the pattern here. We really don't want to remove any more material than we have to but uh, this needs to get cleaned up a little bit before we join everything together for our board. Also when you scrape these if you scrape in this direction you could easily break this grain so at the ends I would scrape inwards scrape inwards here uh, so you just kinda gotta be careful how you clean these up As I run these across the joiner, I'm going to follow behind with my uh, push block here to back up the cut to help prevent this from blowing out. 
Uh, your joiner can blow out end grain, especially on these ends right here, we have the triangle tip. So on this one, we just need to joint this face. Alright, I just ran these across the joiner. Uh, most of them took two passes. I was able to uh, flatten one with one pass and one of them actually took three. Um, so once I'm satisfied with how everything's coming together, I like to mark these for alignment. So I will align the, I will align the pattern the best I can. Make a little witness mark. Quite often the alignment's not 100% perfect. We're out just about a, I don't know, a couple thousandths of an inch right there. Uh, all these segments, triangle shaped segments, um, it's not going to be 100% perfect. But we're going to do the best we can. A little tiny bit of a misalignment right here, a couple thousandths. Let's see if we can get that any better. These look good as we get down here, they're just a tiny bit off. Um, well, I think that's good.